All right. Uh, we are live. Uh, I'm Zucky from Sommelier Protocol, um, and I am speaking to Alex Beaumont uh, from Peanut Trade. Um, can you tell us a little about yourself and Peanut Trade, Alex? Yeah, sure. So my name is Alex Momot. I'm from Ukraine, and I'm in crypto since 2013. Uh, it's quite a while, so I entered at that point of uh, bull run at that times, uh, but still it was quite early. Uh, and uh, after that, I made several startups in Bitcoin space. I was involved in uh, Bitcoin mining equipment uh, production, and uh, then we... Um, established Remy, a cybersecurity startup based on blockchain. And recently, one year ago, we fully converted to DeFi space. And now we making a lot of products for uh, so-called dark forest of Ethereum. So we are trying to make Ethereum uh, ecosystem more friendly to regular users. Okay, so why don't you maybe explain a little bit about what the dark forest is? Yeah, so basically Dark Forest, it's a name for uh, a lot of problems that could face uh, regular users during certain operations with DeFi space. Uh, let's say if you're trying to uh, perform a big order, uh, a lot of bots, uh, sniper bots during listing or uh, sandwich bots or salmonella attack, uh, they could withdraw your liquidity they could try to send order in front of you. It's a regular front running from classic markets that recently appeared on blockchain in blockchain space. And it means that you will lose part of uh, your money due to this kind of bots. That's why we creating uh, products uh, that could use private transaction. It means that uh, your transaction will not go to mempool because the primary source for all the bots is uh, mempool, because it could be tracked, analyzed, and uh, uh, bots could make something with your transaction, because all you can see, uh, all activity you can see on blockchain usually uh, absolutely uh, open for everybody. And uh, it is both uh, possibility, but also, could be a problem so uh, that's why you should be very careful with uh, even simple transactions like selling or making a swap or uh, adding liquidity during listing of your project and uh, we could help with making it absolutely safe okay so yeah this is I, and i think this you know fits well with your history because you know, you uh, you have some exposure to the mining industry, right? Um, and so, you know, the the okay. So, what what's the core idea? The core idea here is, you know, Zucky is is goes to goes to uh, Uniswap or anywhere else, um, and wants to make a swap. Okay, and we assert we assert we assert a certain price uh, for the coins that we want to swap into. Um. Yeah, so uh, when and you... Yep. So when you see that price and you decide to swap it, you've now published basically to, to the entire world uh, by the mempool your intention to make a buy um, and the price at which you're willing to pay. Um, and that now it creates this whole world of what we call MEV, minor extractable value, um, where... Uh, where there is a there based on the slippage that you have set in your transaction there is an opportunity for uh for a miner to profit um by uh by essentially by by front running your trade yeah that's right and um, i can say that it's not a uh, miner itself usually it's uh teams uh, separate teams that uh, has a uh, agreement with miner to make a certain uh, order of transactions, and as a consequence, it could be uh, such an attack. But yeah, yeah. in general, you're yeah, right. So, um, so basically, what Peanut Trade is doing is providing um, 
a, essentially a private connection to miners uh, or to the mining pools uh, to enable transactions that don't appear in the mempool. Yeah, um, is that's, that why of our, that's why of our ability, but okay. we prefer to build uh, final products based, of, uh, based on that ability. So we okay. do not offer connection with miners, we offer solution to interact with market with uh, no possibility for MEV to withdraw part of your profits. Um, okay, can you maybe t explain a little bit more about these solutions? Yeah, so basically we have uh, uh, Fino. It's uh, our solution for sending uh, tokens without, uh, without uh, Ethereum on the address. Uh-huh. So uh, let's say if we're talking about non-custodial wallet, uh, usually uh, the uh, wallet should create a lot of uh, accounts for many users. And uh, when somebody will send you, let's say, USDC, you will need a small fraction of Ethereum on the address to send it uh, to other address. And it could be a problem for the user because he should go to exchange, buy some Ethereum and then put it on that address. And only after that, he will be able to perform the separation. And with Fino, we could uh, inbuilt uh, this solution for uh, non-custodial wallets and even for custodial sometimes uh, to uh, remove that kind of uh, trouble for regular user. And uh, that's one example how MEV would work better for user instead of withdrawing liquidity from them, but uh, in the uh, opposite way, it creates additional benefit. Uh, another solution is uh, protection of a project during listing on uh, Uniswap or PancakeSwap. We can do uh, private mining of uh, liquidity adding. It means that uh, no sniper bot will be able to buy a huge amount of token during that initial listing and uh, damp immediately after that on the users who will try to buy at the first order or first swap. And uh, uh, another our <clears throat> product is uh, uh, liquidity management uh, for Uniswap version 3. So maybe you heard about this uh, new concept of um, Uniswap version 3 when you can uh, choose a range of uh, price where your liquidity will work. But the problem here is that you should manually control it and check is everything okay with the price because otherwise you will have a huge impermanent loss and your liquidity won't work and you will lose money. Uh, that's why we are building uh, this kind of manager and uh, operations will be performed via uh, hidden transaction. So with uh, using the same relay to miners, so no bots will be able to interact. So this is the examples of how MEV could work for the users or uh, how it could protect users from other bots. So it's, um, it seems like you guys are operating in very much the same um, sort of domain as what flashbots are trying to do. Um, with uh, have you? What do you think about sort of the flashbots project? Um, actually, I'll ask an even better question. Okay, so MEV itself is very controversial uh, 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 in the sort of Ethereum DeFi space. Um, you know, some there, there's some view of it as it should be democratized. Uh, there's another view that it should be eliminated. Um, what are you, what what thoughts do you have on on sort of that question? Well, uh, first of all, I think that the fact is much more important than explanation of that fact. So basically, we already have all that situation with MEV, and the basics of MEV goes from the uh, primary um, architecture of blockchain, mempool and blockchain. Uh, fully uh, could be seen in uh, any way from uh, any place. So uh, you can track everything is going on on blockchain. And that's why 
uh, MEV exists. Uh, our actions should be somehow to interact with that. Uh, of course, it's adding complexity to our everyday usage of uh, Ethereum-based applications, but uh, we should uh, somehow create a, a regular products that will use uh, that options that MEV could give us because it's not only bad things like everybody could think now, uh, it could be also a good thing. And the, one of the most important thing we can see right now, it's because uh, our relay and flush belt relay and uh, uh, other similar solutions uh, decreased price of fees in Ethereum network. Uh, because now transactions from bots and transactions from users uh, separated into separate uh, channels and uh, uh, there are no competition in fees between these two types of operators on blockchain. So bots uh, com uh, comparing with uh, bots fees comparing with other bots fees and miners never will choose uh, take bot transaction instead of user transactions like it was maybe six months ago. Uh, this, uh, this advantage came to us because of existence of such uh, solutions. And uh, it is better for whole ecosystem, uh, but still MEV, uh, I think that MEV is impossible to stop or completely remove because otherwise we should make Ethereum blockchain something like Monero blockchain, but uh, I think it's completely impossible because of uh, the essence of smart contract concept. Mm. So what do you think is the, so right, you know, in terms of trying to build these sort of private uh, 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 interactions with mempools, on one hand, you have like what Flashbots is trying to do, which is trying to build a protocol for doing this. On the other hand, it seems like what peanut.trade is trying to do I would characterize it as it being a service provider, i.e. Provi like provide the service of private transactions rather than having a protocol um, for miners to engage with private transactions. What do you think are the trade-offs between these two approaches? Uh, you mean the... Uh, what, what is the trade-off between like, like peanuts.trade or so, and something like Flashbox? Uh, Okay, so uh, let's discuss what is the Flashbots itself, because currently I think that I'm not a big fan of conspiracy theories, but uh, as for me, uh, all the concept of Flashbots is quite uh, good for Ethereum ecosystem, and I think that uh, either Vitalik Buterin or Consensus or somebody else from Ethereum uh, Foundation uh, trying to uh, somehow help them, uh, because all of that situation with uh, uh, on-chain arbitrage and uh, fees on uh, Ethereum now is much better than six months ago. And the main reason for that is uh, that the flashbots are uh, taking 99.9% .9 of all profits and uh, send it directly to miners. So uh, miners has additional source of uh, uh, revenue from that and the DEX on chain arbitrage is dead right now. So um, it's a very specific uh, situation where uh, just in two months, the competition completely killed the big area for um, taking uh, revenue. And uh, I think that all searchers currently uh, working on uh, Flashbots uh, environment uh, need to find something else to earn money. Uh, and uh, as a consequence, we can see the low fees, as I told previously. So uh, our uh, ideas here is completely different. Uh, we don't try to uh, use same concept like Flashbots. We're trying to build uh, final products for regular users and for uh, maybe projects or uh, interest in protocols like non-custodial wallets, uh, like Uniswap, and others, and uh, we just using the uh, good advantage side of MEV and uh, idea to put all that inefficiency of the market inside of 
uh, our smart contracts and deliver additional value to the users. And the trade-off uh, for um, Flashbot service is uh, currently uh, only I can see a problem for searchers in the in this market. So arbitrageurs uh, losing money, not users. Uh, and uh, when we can see London, uh, when we will be able to see London upgrade, so EAP 1559 and other upgrades will completely change the situation with uh, Ethereum economics. And uh, and I think that it will be beneficial for all participants of the network. And maybe we should wait this three weeks or so to see what's going to happen. Uh, my personal feeling is that the situation will be much better than now to, to whole like a system and we will have new benefits and new advantages uh, without the uh, troubles we have now with all that revenue goes to miners. But still, with such a big volatility, I can see a real problem in uh, that because as we know in maybe one year or maybe two years, uh, it will be a fully proof of stake and uh, it will be a huge problem for current uh, miners to change something. And uh, the biggest trade-off I can see right now is not in that layer. Uh, I think that the biggest problem will be uh, existence of uh, super stakers, such as centralized exchanges. Uh, and uh, they will be able to control much bigger part of network uh, than miners could control now. Because if you're talking about miner pools, it's uh, uh, certain equality uh, for different players. But if you will talk about centralized exchanges, you know that all that five or 10 exchanges will control everything. And uh, I hope that uh, other projects such as Lido uh, could be able to take significant part of market uh, because they are from the ecosystem and not from centralized space. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Lido. Um, the, uh, 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 the, so yeah, I think that kind of get, brings, brings us really nicely into this question of, of what is going to happen, you know, so right now we have the emergence of, uh, you know, Uniswap going live on optimism, uh, yesterday, which was big news. Um, and uh, and the you know the coming merge and shift to proof of stake, um, and I think you you sort of started to cut over really nicely like how all of those things like uh, how all of this sort of is moving around um, the uh, the uh, the privacy problem and the MEV problem um, to various layers of the stack, um, and so. Uh, so yeah, um, so it's it sounds like you have a lot of work cut out for you uh, as all of these things are are shifting and we all do. Um, uh, so what's coming up for for Peanut? What what's 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 on the horizon? What's what's the what's the what's the next end user product that you're going to be building, or that's coming out? Well, we always have a lot of ideas, and uh, it's really hard to implement all of that. So we should choose. Uh, and uh, our current goal to use uh, our two products, uh, upcoming products, uh, Fino and uh, SmartLP. So Fino is uh, sending uh, tokens without Ethereum and uh, SmartLP is uh, liquidity manager for Uniswap Operations 3. Uh, it should come this month, uh, maybe in better version and next month it, it will be fully uh, in production. And uh, we will try to use uh, all the advantages of uh, our approach to deliver the best performing solution. And uh, our next step will be to make uh, aggregation of two our products, uh, Hedge Solution and Smart LP. Uh, Hedge Solution is made for protecting users from impermanent loss. And uh, currently with Uniswap version 3, it's a lot of troubles for users to understand how they should really manage all that liquidity, how they should choose appropriate uh, pool in Uniswap, because uh, as you know, it could be a tricky um, 
solution because if uh, you will choose a very big pool like it was on Uniswap version 2, uh, with higher capital efficiency, your earnings will be not so big. And it means that you should try to find the proper balance because uh, range of liquidity, it means capital efficiency, uh, between size of the pool, so it should it not uh, it should be not very big, and uh, it should be a very good uh, volumes on that. So your fees will be enough to cover your impairment loss, because if <clears throat> your range will be too small, uh, in the opposite side you will have a bigger impairment loss. Uh, recently, a very good discussion between uh, Yearn. Uh, founders and uh, Hayden Adams uh, take place on uh, Twitter. And I think uh, it's a very good discussion that could uh, show everybody that uh, it is quite a new concept and we should spend certain time to understand how all of that will work together. And our idea is uh, to add uh, solutions that will be able to cover your impairment loss on the one, your asset. Let's say if you are providing uh, USDC and uh, Ethereum, so you can buy a hedge during that initial add-on of liquidity, uh, mm -hmm. and it will protect you from decreasing the price of Ether, increasing your overall yield after that period. And um, I think it could heavily uh, improve uh, user experience with Uniswap. And it's, uh, I'm just looking at the hedge product page. It looks like you source the the head the the put and call options from centralized exchanges. So what you guys are actually doing is essentially composing CFI and DeFi. Uh, yeah, currently we have no choice because there are no enough uh, liquidity on uh, decentralized option platforms, and I hope that during several months uh, it will be better situation with that. And our primary goal will make uh, to make. Uh, to make everything completely on-chain, but uh, it's not an easy to do today. So that's why we are taking the liquidity from centralized exchanges as well. Fantastic. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, that's very cool. Very, very cool. Um, anything else you want to talk about or... Uh, or uh, or tell to our audience um, the, this, this, this. So you know, the other thing is you have a wait list for uh, for the for these uh, products. Um, how, how do liquidity providers uh, who are listening get access? Yeah. So uh, basically, on our website, you can left uh, your mail, and uh, we will contact you after uh, Smart LP will be available for public. And uh, uh, currently, we have uh, more than 1,000 with something uh, applications uh, with huge amount of liquidity. So I think it's a very big problem. And uh, the very interesting thing is that uh, we have no direct uh, advertisement of this product until the very late time. And it means that uh, people trying to uh, find something like that and uh, it will be a huge problem in the next months. Uh, and we are very grateful for those who left the applications. Uh, you gave us an uh, uh, idea that we should uh, spend uh, more time on that. And uh, personally, for me, we have uh, uh, such kind of uh, separation in our team with favorite products. And uh, Smart LP is my favorite product because it's quite a complex one. Uh, it's really hard to find appropriate fit for um, or balance uh, between uh, capital efficiency, impairment loss, uh, and all of that, and uh, how fast we should change the position. Uh, and uh, to understand what all that math behind the Uniswap version 3 from their team. Uh, so I think that uh, if you're interested in such a product, definitely uh, come to our website and left your application. Uh, it will help us to understand how many people are interested in the product and uh, we will spend more efforts to that. And uh, please uh, spend a little bit more time to understand what is impermanent loss and how it could affect your uh, yield and uh, uh, your profitability uh, during providing liquidity. Uh, and uh, 
special uh, thanks to Ethereum team because uh, they push in all of that, uh, all the upgrades, and despite miners have quite a big opposition currently, uh, we know that EIP 1559 will be beneficial for all the uh, players in the game. And uh, uh, of course, about the proof of stake, it's a lot of uh, discussions, but uh, I'm sure that uh, proof of stake will be much better. The only concern I have uh, currently is uh, the proper balance of that centralized uh, players after it will be a fully, uh, full transition on uh, Ethereum 2.0. Uh, we will have uh, proper uh, players who will understand the importance of distributed uh, world and uh, nobody will try to play in uh, something that could uh, affect the stability and the distributed architecture of uh, Ethereum ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, that's fantastic. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, and this was fantastic. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people who like didn't really know about all these things that you guys are building. Um, so this, I think, was a great educational opportunity for a lot of people about uh, um, sort of some of the, I guess, uh, less well-known uh, 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 products out there for dealing with the MEV problem, um, uh, dealing with the private transaction problem, and uh, building, uh, building new products on top of uh, being a Uniswap liquidity provider. Yeah, sure. If you have any questions, please come to our Telegram group. We'll be happy to answer, even if it's just a general questions about ecosystem. We'll be happy to help everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, thank you for invitation.